Let's talk about the cranial nerves, which are peripheral nerves that branch off of the brain directly, rather than coming from the spinal cord like the rest of the peripheral nervous system. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves, the first two of which branch off of the cerebrum, while the other 10 exit from different parts of the brainstem. Cranial nerves generally travel to the upper part of the body, including the face, neck, and shoulders. The cranial nerves have been known to frequently show up on test questions and board exams, so to help you memorize them, there are a variety of mnemonics that exist. We'll use one of the more popular ones, which goes, ooh, 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 to touch and feel, very green vegetables, ah. These words represent the cranial nerves in order, which we'll go over now. The first ooh is for olfactory. The olfactory nerve is a sensory nerve that is responsible for the sense of smell. Unlike most other sensory nerves, the olfactory nerve does not pass through the thalamus before going to the cortex, but rather goes to parts of the cerebral cortex and subcortex directly, which may explain why a response to smell tends to be much more immediate and emotional compared to other sensory modalities. The second ooh is for optic. The optic nerve is a sensory nerve that is responsible for eyesight. Like the olfactory nerve, it branches off of the brain directly, rather than the brainstem. We will cover the process by which light entering the eyes is converted into a conscious visual image in more detail in a future video. The third and final ooh is for ocular motor. In contrast to the optic nerve, which involves the sensory process of sight, the ocular motor nerve is responsible for eye movement. It, along with two other cranial nerves that we will discuss in just a second, controls the six muscles known as the extraocular muscles. The ocular motor nerve innervates four out of these six muscles, making it by far the biggest contributor to eye movement. This nerve also contains the nerve fibers going to the pupillary sphincter, which constricts the pupils to change the amount of light entering the eye, as well as those going to the ciliary muscle, which changes the shape of the lens to allow the eye to focus on nearby objects. Two is for trochlear. The trochlear nerve is another motor nerve that, like the oculomotor nerve, controls the muscles of eye movement. In particular, the trochlear nerve controls the superior oblique muscle, which is responsible for moving the eye at a downward medial angle. Interestingly, the superior oblique exists as a pulley system of sorts, which is why it pulls the eye at an angle rather than in a simple left, right, or up-down direction. Touch is for trigeminal. We're going to take a break from eye movement for a second, but we'll be back to cover the third and final nerve in that process soon. Instead, the fifth cranial nerve is the trigeminal nerve, which is a mixed nerve, meaning that it contains both motor and sensory neurons. The trigeminal nerve carries information from the skin over the face as well as motor signals to the muscles responsible for chewing. So for this person, the trigeminal nerve is helping them not only to chew their food, but also to feel the cold on their cheeks. The trigeminal nerve splits into three branches, which each serve a different function. The alphthalmic nerve carries sensation from the upper third of the face. The maxillary nerve carries sensation from the middle third of the face. And finally, the mandibular nerve carries sensation from the lower third of the face, as well as providing the motor control over chewing. And is for abducens. The abducens nerve is the third and final nerve responsible for eye movement. It controls the lateral rectus muscle that makes the eye look outward towards the ears. You can remember which cranial nerves move which extraocular muscles by thinking of the phrase LR6SO4, which, despite being nonsense, has a strange way of sticking in the brain. Feel is for facial. The facial nerve is a mixed nerve. Its motor components controls the muscles of facial expression from the forehead down to the chin. So when you blink, smile, or puff out your cheeks, you are using the facial nerve. The facial nerve also carries sensory information about taste from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. Finally, a branch of the facial nerve travels to the stapedius, a small muscle that helps to stabilize and reduce the noise traveling on the stapes bone in the inner ear. As a quick clinical correlate, dysfunction of the facial nerve is known as Bell's palsy, and results in a loss of motor ability on one side of the face. A change in taste and an increased volume of auditory sensations may also occur. The loss of function on only a single side of the face is often quite noticeable, making it clear as a bell that something has gone wrong with the facial nerve. Very is for vestibulocochlear. 
The vestibulocochlear nerve is a sensory nerve that carries two different types of sensory information from the inner ear. It splits into two main divisions, the cochlear nerve, which carries information about sound from the cochlea, and the vestibular nerve, which carries information about balance and spatial orientation from the vestibular system. Green is for glossopharyngeal. The glossopharyngeal nerve is a mixed nerve, although its sensory functions far outweigh its motor roles, as it innervates only a single muscle, the stylopharyngeus, which assists in swallowing. Its primary responsibility is to convey sensory information from the inside of the mouth, as well as taste from the posterior third of the tongue. Remember that the facial nerve covers taste from the anterior two-thirds. One of its key roles is to detect the presence of objects in the mouth that shouldn't be there and to initiate the gag reflex, which is why doctors are so insistent upon sticking popsicle sticks in your mouth when you go to their office. Vegetables is for vagus. The vagus nerve is a mixed nerve that is quite unique for a cranial nerve. While the vagus nerve does a few things around the head and the neck, such as innervating muscles related to speaking and swallowing, it is unique in that it has functions throughout the rest of the body as well including the heart, lungs, and gastrointestinal tract. Specifically, the vagus nerve is responsible for controlling parasympathetic output to these organs, putting them in a state where they support the organism feeding and breeding, then resting and digesting. The vagus nerve also relays sensory signals from these organs back to the brain, allowing it to further fine-tune the autonomic response. Overall, the vagus nerve is a hugely important nerve given its widespread effects throughout the body. The A in A is for accessory. The accessory nerve, also sometimes called the spinal accessory nerve, is a motor nerve that supplies two muscles in the neck, the sternocleidomastoid, which turns the head from side to side, and the trapezius, which shrugs the shoulders. And finally, the H in A is for hypoglossal. The hypoglossal nerve is a motor nerve that innervates nearly all muscles involved with movement of the tongue. It is not involved in taste sensation, as you can recall that this function is covered by the facial and glossopharyngeal nerves. So there you have it, the cranial nerves in a nutshell. Beyond just remembering their names, it can be helpful to remind yourself of the general function of each of the cranial nerves, specifically whether it is a sensory nerve, a motor nerve, or both. You can use the phrase, some say merry money, but my brother says big brains matter more, to match the function of the nerve, with words beginning with S being sensory nerves, those beginning with M being motor nerves, and those beginning with B being nerves with both motor and sensory functions. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.